You know, it's not a piece of cake. And then there's the maintenance of Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a really old house. So once you have it, <laughs> you know, you've got it. But mm -hmm. it, 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 I think there's, the idea is to instill enough enthusiasm and passion for the issues that are represented by this place mm -hmm. that regardless of what happens, it's going to be saved. I mean, there were times when people, my, one of my classic stories is um, we were at the point uh, where we had some uh, real estate issues that we needed to discuss and our attorney was out of town on vacation and my husband had a friend in Philadelphia, a male, who uh, basically, um, you know, was a big real estate attorney in Philadelphia and so Jeff got an appointment for me to go over and meet with him to talk to him about some of the couple of questions I had and I went into his office and uh, he sort of looked over his glasses at me and he said, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm just real busy today, but you know, how can I help you? And I told him, he said, well, tell me a little bit about this. And I did, and he said, he looked at me and he said, how do you think you and this little group of women are gonna save this property? <laughs> and I can remember, like it was yesterday, the sort of rage that I felt that he would have asked that of me in that way. And I remember my answer was, you know what? I don't know how we're gonna do it. I just know we're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I get really angry, I tend to wanna to cry. And so I was saying, please don't <laughs> let me shed a tear in front of this guy. And I remember getting on the elevator after my meeting with him with tears going streaming down my face. But the fact is, we did say that. Yeah. And and uh, so it you know these are the, there were a lot of people a lot of naysayers along the way, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that's what Alice felt with ERA and and all of the people who've worked on it since then, which mm -hmm. is we don't know how you're going to do this. Well, I mean sooner or later you just have to get enough gumption, I guess is an old fashioned <laughs> word to say yeah. we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. We don't know how. But I feel as though, I mean, we joked, but it was true. We kept saying, every once in a while when something would happen, we would say, how are we going to get out of this? And we'd say, well, Alice is going to tell us. You know, the women up there are going to tell us. And, and they did. So yeah, yeah. you have to have a, there's sort of a, I guess I'm a believer of sort of put, putting things out to the universe. <laughs> yeah. That's and we talk about you, you put it out to the universe and then you just wait to see what the universe brings back mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, you have to work for it, but somehow or other, a way through yeah. will be shown to you. Yes. Nature hates a vacuum, so yes. if you open up a space, right. it will get filled, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It will always get filled with something. One of the things that's um, really kind of impressive and I think... Um, Important about that story is that you know even after you know just after that really really hard punch in the face that was the ERA not being ratified and those few people making that decision for all of us um, really um, that you know then you encountered all these just really good people oh yeah who were just like oh yeah this is a good project I mean the people who were trying to sell this house sort of rebought it again a little bit <laughs> temporarily yeah. so that the project could be finished and so that this institute could come into being and you just find that, you know, you it's easy to forget when you are in the kind of work that an organization like now does mm -hmm. that there are just really wonderful, generous souls in the world who will get your back. Absolutely. You know? Well and and the couple that lived in this house, um he was an engineer mm -hmm. and worked at uh, RCA or someplace like that mm -hmm. nearby. And she was a librarian and worked at the Morristown Friends School, which is where Alice Paul graduated from high school. So, so she knew who Alice Paul was. Mm -hmm. And so Miriam. Um, fire her, miss her name, wonderful woman, and her husband Marvin um, knew about Alice, and I'm sure 
that Miriam, because she knew, I'm sure she conveyed that to Marvin, he was very supportive. And so that's why, you know, they didn't want to see this house destroyed. Yeah. So that's why they were willing to work yeah. with us, which was just, so, you know, things to happen for a reason. Right. I mean, you really, it's not by accident. No. And, yeah. and, and, you know, Bobby, and I've talked a lot about the word synchronicity. Yes. <laughs> synchronicity. And I believe in it. Yeah. Just, you got to pay attention believer. to the signs, yeah. man. you got to keep your eyes open. Yeah. Because they're there. You know, mm -hmm. the world is talking to you all the time. Yes. You know, you and you just, just have not, to listen. You just may not be listening that day, but yeah. it'll talk to you again. <laughs> um, yeah. Always. <laughs> it works. And, it, you know, it would be, I mean, we were talking earlier about how much I like old houses and architecture. And mm -hmm. it would just be a tragedy for a place like this to disappear just physically. Yes. It's such a beautiful house and it's such a great instance of its style. Yes. You know, that you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to lose this under any circumstances. You know, but then it's become something more than itself. It's going to live. You know, it's not just going to be an, an example. <laughs> you know, when, when, you, when you said this, it made me think about um, you know, some of the characters that we encountered over our journey of trying to save this place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were the people who were the um, sort of absolute believers and contributors and how can I help and so on. And there were the people who said, you know, how do you think you are going to do it? <laughs> um, and then, and there, were, and there were, even in talking with the, the, the bank, the various people at the banks. I went to one banker um, who um, had been recommended to me by someone, and um, he was a Quaker himself, hmm. and he was the president of a small bank, and he basically said, you know, Barbara, he said, um, I really want to help you, but he said, we couldn't do this by ourselves. He said, so I'm going to give you a list of banks that you should go out and talk to and see if you can get anybody else interested in coming to the table with me. So we ended up with a meeting with this gentleman and six other bank representatives, all of whom said they would love to be involved with the project. So I mean, that was just fabulous. But what ended up happening was that we ended up with a mortgage of $365,000. Um, this is a big chunk of land. Yeah, <laughs> six and a half acres. Yeah. So um, they, what happened was, um, one of the people that I ran across was Barbara Boggs Sigmund. Barbara Boggs Sigmund was Lindy Boggs's daughter, Hale Boggs's daughter. Mm -hmm. She um, was married to a uh, professor at Princeton, uh, Paul Sigmund. Uh, they lived in Princeton, and she was the mayor of Princeton Borough. And I ran into her at a women's political caucus meeting or something, mm -hmm. and went up to her, and she and I had met one another on several occasions, and I went up to her and I said, her name was Barbara also, <laughs> and I said, Barbara, do you know anything about the New Jersey Economic Development Authority? And she said, well, as a matter of fact, I do. She said, I know the man who runs it. I said, you do? She said, yes. I explained to her that I'd gotten this little postcard about how the New Jersey Economic Development Authority provides loans to nonprofits. So her comment to me was, honey, we're going to go call it. Because remember, she grew up in New Orleans. Oh, so she was a Southern, southern woman. Yes. Mm. And so we, I showed up the day she got the appointment for us. I showed up. The two of us went into the ladies' room. And I'll never forget standing. Here was Barbara here, and here I was. And she, she was primping and so forth. And I was putting on my lipstick. And she said, she said, well, the two Barbaras are now ready. Let's go in and, you know, let's make our presentation, whatever it was. And we go in. And, of course, you know, this guy was a wonderful man. And he basically said, look. I can't give you a loan, but I can give you a guarantee, a loan guarantee, which would mean that these banks, if anybody defaulted on the loan, if you couldn't pay for the loan, we would guarantee the loan. Wow. 
So, of course, that was like an insurance policy right. for these banks. Right. So they all came to the table, and once EDA said we can do this guarantee, they mm -hmm. were willing to do it. So that's how that worked out. But, I mean, there have just been a whole series of these people that, you know, you just couldn't believe all the circumstances that would come together mm -hmm. to cause something like this to, yeah. to happen. Yeah. So that's why we kept saying, it's Alice and yeah. all those women out there. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. You know, they're just nudging, nudging people in the, into the right mm -hmm. places, you know. I right. used to... Um, I used to say the angels rearrange physics when you're in trouble. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> they That's fix right. It so that you don't land too Yeah. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, they may not actually be beings with wings, but they yeah. move the laws of physics when you need them to. And I, it's the same thing, you know, a little, little nudge. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's interesting, too, and, and, you know, I think sometimes people who are coming into um, a kind of political awareness or into an activist situation, you know, now is all grassroots. Most of the people in it are not trained in political science or social policy. They're all, mm -hmm. you know, just folks, right. <laughs> you know, who have other jobs and other things to do and they're all volunteering. But a lot of people don't come in, you know, to do that kind of work because they find it overwhelming. Yes. There's going to be too much to learn. Mm -hmm. um, it's too foreign. It feels you know, kind of dangerous and like you can fail too easily. Um, and one of the things that I am finding again and again and again in the stories that women are telling me as I do this project is that y'all just like ad hoc it and came up against this thing you didn't know and figured it out and um, yeah. just had a real faith in your ability to just bend to the shape that was required to get the thing done, mm -hmm. you know, um, that I think is really encouraging, you know, it essentially, is. that's all you need. <laughs> yes, you, uh, you know, n not to say that any, uh, I shouldn't say this, I'm sure there's one person somewhere, but not to say that any one individual um, can pull something off by themselves, but if you're willing to work mm -hmm. in concert with other people, mm -hmm. um, that is the strength. I mean, you know, the whole thing, the old, old cliche of strength in numbers and so forth. It's true. Mm -hmm. And once you, once you start, uh, you know, once you come up with a plan, whether it's an individual or whether it's a small group of individuals, as we were, um, and we basically went out and started proselytizing, mm -hmm. other people became interested mm -hmm. and got involved mm -hmm. and gave money and helped and did whatever. So yeah, I mean, it's really, it is very uplifting. And frankly, it's a huge confidence builder. I mean, to start out, when we started out raising money for Alice Paul's, the, the books and papers and all of her personal effects, we didn't know a darn thing about, I mean, really, uh, you know, we knew how to raise a little bit of money, um, not bake sales, but you know what I'm saying. We could raise money for the cause, and we did do that for ERA and so on. But we really didn't know big time fundraising. Right. And we were working in concert with the Schlesinger Library at, um, you know, up in Boston. It was now, it was, it's now part of Harvard. Mm -hmm. And the um, American History Museum is part of the Smithsonian Institution. So they basically lit their names because we had said, look, if we get this collection, we're going to give pieces of it to each of you. I mean, there were certain things that Schlesinger wanted and there were certain things that the Smithsonian wanted. So, but we were in charge of doing all the fundraising and so on. And they helped to, you know, they gave us a few names and so on. But the upshot was, we just had to do it. And so, you know, invention is uh, the mother, and, and what is it? It says the, the mother of invention, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's how it happens. And then, you know, once you do that, then the next time you have to do something like that, it becomes easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, and you, you know, none of y'all ever let you know the phrase "I don't know how to do this" right. matter. Right. You know, instead, it was always, "Well, I'm just going to learn how to do it." Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and if I'm not good at it, I'm going to find somebody who is. <laughs> so that they well, will then. <laughs> and, and actually, I was thinking one of the good one example of that was um, there had been a number of institutions who had been interested in this collection, Alice Paul's collection, but nobody really wanted to pay top dollar for it, or could in some cases mm -hmm. pay top dollar for it. 
long story short, uh, it ended up being sold at a public auction in Philadelphia by an auction house. And there, it was divided, it was not sold as in its entirety, it was sold in individual lots. And we had to figure out if we only had X amount of money, how were we going to be able to save? So we did that. But what happened was we ended up raising, I don't know, 50 some odd thousand dollars. We had no idea who our competition was. Mm. And so um, my husband, Jeff, had a friend in the real estate business who also on the side was an auctioneer. And so the day before the auction in Philadelphia, a bunch of us went over to his office, sat in his office, and he told us the strategy of how auctions, to, work. When, how auctions work, what we needed to do, and so on. And we knew that there were going to be people at the auction who wanted to buy some pieces of this, maybe, or maybe the whole thing. We really didn't know it was our night. So we had different members of our group assigned to bid on individual lots. And we figured out how high they could go. Mm -hmm. And then we found out, um, as we were going into the auction, that they were going to have, uh, after the lots were all bid upon, they would add up all of those amounts and then if somebody wanted to buy it in its entirety, they could bid higher than that last amount. So we didn't want to outbid ourselves to the point that we couldn't afford it. Yeah. So the upshot was different ones of us bid on different lots. And then we didn't want anyone to recognize us. So this fellow, the auction guy, had his wife bid on the collection in its entirety. The point is, we just learned. I mean, you know, you just had somebody explain to you, this is how it works and this is what you need to do. And we did it and ta-da, ta-da, it turned out. I mean, it was great. But it was just amazing to see how that worked. And we ended up actually buying the whole thing for like $27,000 with money left over, enough money that we could ship the pieces to the two institutions. Mm -hmm. And it was just, um, you know, it was just one of those things where, I mean, frankly, after that, you know, and that's when the folks who lived in the house approached us. You know, after we had done that, we thought, we could just take on the world, you know? <laughs> we figured out how to do that. We, we know how to do that. So anyway, so, so when they approached us, we were a lot less reluctant uh, than we would have been had we not had that experience. Yeah, you had you succeeded. So, so you know, one thing, one thing builds on another. So you don't start out full blown. Uh, you know, as an expert in whatever it is, but you build up to it. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing what you can learn if you just sort of put yourself out there. Yeah. I used to call that the Athena complex. Uh, okay. I just want to arrive fully yeah, formed, yes, ready exactly. to go. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure that will happen to some people, but, but in our cases, we were taking it one step at a time. Yeah, and I tell you, it was, uh, you know, we all felt like Wow, you know this is pretty amazing. You can you can really do it if you want to do it. Well, it's yeah. and it's a tremendous thing. It's a tremendous place, you know. And the work that's coming out of it is for the future. You know, this is one of the things I um, love about this project and about this house is you know you got to hold on to your past if you want to know what sort of world you're going to build. Um, and I think that the the feminist project, you know, is a big global thing. Is right. about creating a new kind of world for people to live in. Right. Um, that is more just, more fair, allows for a more robust kind of humanity. And you can't do that if you don't hang on to the good examples mm -hmm. from the past, you know? You just, it's just not going to work. Well, I'm, you know? I'm, I don't know how many people, and actually you should, you should share this with Virginia now. I, I'm doubting how many, I mean, there are probably very few people that know that the preservation of this place came about as the legacy of the, Virginia, the struggle for the ERA in Virginia. <laughs> because if I hadn't been through that, yeah, you know, yeah. this would was probably something um, that I might not have even been involved in. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, as it happened, when we were doing the, uh, the auction, the whole thing,